This is the Robert Wood Johnson Health Policy Podcast Series, the interview series with the nation's leading experts in health policy. Our guest today is Professor Mark Pauley, the Benheim Professor of Healthcare Management and Public Policy at the University of Pennsylvania. A controversial Time magazine article by Steve Brill sparked much debate over the large variation in hospital pricing. In addition, there's the related issue regarding the lack of transparency on how prices are set and exactly what these prices are. But the Affordable Care Act remains silent on this issue. We asked Professor Mark Pauley if he agreed. I think that's right, because almost all of its cost containment provisions apply to Medicare, mm -hmm. and Medicare pays no attention to those price variations, those list price variations that the uh, author of the Time Magazine article got so upset about. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, I personally don't think most people should get upset about them either because no, almost nobody pays those prices, mm -hmm. but Medicare definitely does not pay yeah. those list prices. It pays what it says it will pay, yeah. and that varies much, much less on a per unit basis anyway than those posted prices. Well, what's really surprising to me is that if you're not uh, within the Medicare system and you receive this astronomical medical bill, there's no stop bargaining here. People don't seem to know that this is just a projection or a bargaining place. Mm. How can we really get to that issue? Uh, well, uh, part of the answer is what my father always told me whenever I came to him with a problem, you should have thought of that beforehand, <laughs> uh, uh, which is uh, equivalent to saying if you uh, think that you'll have to pay what uh, hospitals' charges are, which mm -hmm. is actually a relatively tiny fraction even of the privately insured mm -hmm. population, the advice is to uh, first determine in advance, if you can, what the hospital will charge you, mm -hmm. and um, uh, people don't usually think of a knee replacement like a used car, uh, car but there is definitely possibilities for negotiating mm -hmm. beforehand uh, because um, uh, hospitals, especially the great bulk of hospitals that are nonprofit, really do want to serve their population. Right. But I agree, it's a terribly untidy situation. Mm -hmm. uh, the only saving grace is that the fraction of the U.S. population that actually faces those prices is, yeah. is really very tiny. Right. Uh, probably uh, they covered almost all of them in the Time Magazine article. Yeah. There probably aren't that many more. Yeah, no, there were some really compelling topics. Yes, really. but, but those are the, by, those are the exception by far rather than the rule. For most of us that have private health insurance, um, our insurer has already done the price negotiation mm -hmm. for us. So even if we're paying the deductible or even if it's a high deductible plan, yeah. the price you will pay is not what the hospital's posted price is, it's mm -hmm. what your catastrophic insurer has negotiated with the hospital. Now, again, there are a few people who fall through the cracks and mm -hmm. uh, they can be in a very serious situation with those yeah. high hospital bills. But if you read between the lines, um, most of those people didn't follow my dad's advice. <laughs> Which is, should have you don't want to pick on the victim, but, uh, but it's, uh, and, but, and, and I think the main criticism is that although, although the system in my point, of, from my point of view, isn't nearly as bad as you would judge from that article. Right. There are these dangers, there are these traps that um, people can fall into and right. we should try to avoid those traps. Yeah. That's it for today's Health Policy Podcast. If you'd like to hear the full 20-minute interview as an audio podcast, please go to the URL below. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Chileshi and Conde Price. <music>